Hello, welcome to my student support system. In today's class of child health nursing, we will discuss about worm infestations in children. This class is in English and if you want to study in Hindi, just click on I button and you will get link of Hindi lecture or you can directly visit to, to the channel my student support system. What is worm infestations? One of the leading cause of pain abdomen in the children is intestinal infestation which is mostly caused by intestinal parasites such as worms. Worms tend to live in the intestine and feed off the child's nutrition. There are different types of intestinal worms that can cause worm infestations but the most common which we will study today in this class are round worm, tape worm, pin worm or thread worm and hook worm. Let us see first round worm infestation. Round worm infestation is also known as ascariasis. It is caused by a worm known as Ascaris lumbricoids. These worms are parasites that use human body as a host to mature from larva to egg and to adult worms. Adult worms which reproduce can be more than 30 centimeters long. This is the adult Ascaris. How it spreads? An individual become infected with Ascaris after accidentally ingesting the eggs of the Ascaris lumbricoids. The eggs can be found in the soil contaminated by human feces, especially during in the areas of open defecation or uncooked food contaminated by soil that contains roundworm eggs. Children often become infected when they put their hands or finger in the mouth after playing in the contaminated soil. How it grows in the human body? Swallowed egg first hatch in the intestine. The larva then move through the bloodstream to the lungs. Means through intestine they enter into the mucosa and then to bloodstream and with the blood they move and reach to the lungs. After maturing, the round worm leave the lungs. How? From, from the blood vessels or capillaries it enter into the alveoli and then through alveoli it ascends to the trachea and then they come to the throat. And when individual cough up, it may be swallowed or thrown outside in the environment. When it is swallowed back to the intestine, they reaches to the small intestine and stay there, becomes mature and lay more eggs. The cycle continues. Some eggs are excreted through the feces to infect many more and other eggs hatch in the intestine and return to the lungs. Sign and Symptoms People with Ascaris often have no symptom. Symptoms are noticeable only when the number of roundworm increases. And roundworm when they reach in the lungs they can cause coughing, shortness of breath, aspiration, pneumonia, blood sometime in the mucus or sputum, chest discomfort, fever and when the uh, roundworm reaches to the intestine and becomes uh, more in number then nausea, vomiting, weight loss, irregular stools, sometime diarrhea, sometime constipation 
paint visible worms in the stool loss of appetite abdominal discomfort or pain intestinal obstruction causes severe pain abdomen and vomiting and sometimes the worms can be seen in the vomitus growth impairment in the children due to malabsorption how these are diagnosed stool examination where the worms can be seen x rays ct scan even ultrasounds mri scan and through endoscopy we can find out the escaries treatment roundworm infestations can be treated with anti parasitic drugs medications most commonly used are albendazole avermectin and mebendazole in severe cases when the roundworm completely blocks the intestine then the child or patient may need surgery next important worm infestation is hook uh, tape worm why this name is tape worm because it is, is seen like a tape measure tape worm are flat segmented worms which look like tape measure mainly two types of tape worms infest human beings these are tinea solium and tinea saginata although tape worms in human usually cause few symptom or no symptom and easily treated but sometime complications may occur which are life threatening how it spreads eating undercooked meat from the infected animals is the main cause of tapeworm infection in the people humans can also become infected if there is contact with the animal feces or eating contaminated food or drinking contaminated water people can pass tapeworm eggs to others when they don't wash their hands after using toilet so bathrooms how it grows in animals the swallowed egg first hatch in their intestine invade the intestinal mucosa and migrate to the striated muscles through the blood where they develop into cysticercus they become cyst known as cysticercus a cysticercus can survive for several years in the animal human become infected by ingesting raw or undercooked infected meat from these animals in the human intestine the cysticercus develop over 2 months into adult tapeworm which can survive for years the adult tapeworm attached to the small intestine by their scolex and reside in the small intestine length of adult worm usually 5 meter or less in the tinea saginata and 2 to 7 meter in tinea solium the adult produce proglottids which mature and become gravid detach from the tapeworm and migrate to the anus and pass in the stool what sign and symptoms tapeworm Uh, sometimes tapeworm causes nausea weakness diarrhea abdominal pain fatigue weight loss increased hunger or sometimes loss of appetite diagnostic investigations are stool examination x ray ct scan ultrasound mri and endoscopy what treatment can be done for this tapeworm infestations can be treated with anti parasitic drugs and medications most commonly used are niclosamide and mepacarmine in severe cases when the tapeworm reaches to the brain tissue the patient may need surgery pinworm or the threadworm Pinworms are tiny 
narrow worms. They are white in color and less than half centimeter long. Entrobius vermicularis is widely known as human pinworm. Due to the female's long pointed tail, they are commonly known as pinworm because it is like a pin sharp. And this is the most common type of worm infestation in human beings. How it spreads? By accidentally swallowing or breathing in pinworm eggs because it is very small and sometime may spread through the air also or sometime it remains in the air and then come down. The tiny microscopic eggs can be carried to the mouth by contaminated food, drink and fingers. Once swallowed, the eggs hatch in the intestine, mature into the adult worms within few weeks. How it grows? Gravid adult female Entrobius vermicularis deposit egg on the perianal folds especially during night. Infection occur via self-inoculation, transferring the eggs to the mouth with hands. The, because the child scratch the perianal area because there is itching and the eggs are deposited in the fingers and when he uh, eat food or something and put hand in the mouth, the eggs goes in the oral cavity. This is known as self inoculation and sometime it can be spread to the other children because the eggs are exposed in the environment especially through contaminated surface, clothes, bed linens. Following ingestion of the infected eggs, larva hatch in the small intestine. The time interval from ingestion of infected eggs to oviposition. Oviposition means laying of the eggs around the anus. By adult female is about one month. Gravid female migrate nocturnally. Nocturnally means in the night outside the anus and oviposit or we can say deposit the eggs while crawling on the skin in the of the perianal area. The larva contained inside the eggs develop and egg become now infected infective in 4 to 6 hours under optimal conditions. What are signs and symptoms? Sometimes normally pinworm have no symptom except itching around the uh, anal and vaginal area, insomnia, irritability, teeth grinding, restlessness, occasional stomach pain and nausea. These are the common Sign and symptoms of pinworm. Diagnostic investigation. A tip test is most reliable method for diagnosing the pinworm. This test consists of taking a piece of cellulo tip and pressing it tightly against the skin around the anal area. This tip is placed on a slide and examined under the microscope to see whether it contains pinworm eggs or not. Treatment The most common and effective medicine to treat pinworm are mebendazole, albendazole and pyrantal palm oil. One course of medicine usually involves an initial dose followed by a second dose in after 2 or 3 weeks, normally 14 days. More than one course may be necessary to fully eliminate the pinworm eggs and normally whole family is treated together. Now hookworm. Hookworm disease in the human is caused by encyclostoma duodenale, encyclostoma calcinicum, selenicum and nicator americanus. Hook worms affect the lungs, skin and small intestine. Human contract the hookworm through hookworm larva. 
found in the dirt contaminated by human feces how it spreads the child become infected with hookworm by coming in contact with the soil that contain their larva the larva enters the skin directly by piercing it and it travel through the blood stream and enter into the lungs they are carried to the small intestine when these are coughed up or and ingested or swallowed in the from the throat to the intestine fully grown they live in the intestine for a year or more before passing through the feces eggs are passed in the stool under favorable condition or moisture and shed larva hatch in one or two days and become free living in contaminated soil filary form larva of hookworm are infective these larva can survive 3 to 4 weeks in favorable environmental conditions in the soil on contact with human host typically barefooted the larva penetrate the skin and are carried through the blood vessels to the heart and then to the lungs they penetrate the pulmonary alveoli ascend to the bronchial tree to the pharynx and then swallowed the larva reach to the jejunum of the small intestine where they reside and mature into adults adult worm live in the human of the in the small intestine typically at the distal end of jejunum where they attach to the intestinal wall and resultant blood loss by the host means they suck the blood what are signs and symptoms colic abdominal pain cramping and excessive crying of infants nausea sometime fever blood appear in the stool loss of appetite itchy rashes where it enters especially on the foot and loss of weight for diagnostic investigation physical examination is done then rashes may be seen on the foot stool examination and blood examination how it is treated the most common and effective medication to treat hookworm are mebendazole albendazole and pyrantel palm oil and for severe anemia in these cases iron supplementations may be given how we can prevent these worm infestations just by providing health education and awareness to the public we should tell the parents that keep the children's fingernails short and clean to keep the dirt containing worm eggs from getting lost under their nails stop pets from giving worms to the family by putting them on parasite control program from a veterinary doctor deworming of the pets wash hands before preparing distributing and eating food wash all fruits salad and vegetable before use rinse all the meat thoroughly before preparing them for cooking make sure that children wash their hands with soap and clean water after using toilets do not drink water that may be dirty or contaminated wear shoes to stop worms entering through the skin of feet use sanitary latrines no open defecation means no worms deworming the child time to time also effectively reduce the overall spread of worm infestations in the community thank you students for watching this video for such lectures you can subscribe channel my student support system like facebook page my student support system for latest updates for making your notes you can visit my blogger my nursing students dot blogspot dot com for latest update follow my twitter instagram and join facebook group nursing notes thank you have a nice day